Aloha, welcome to the greatest awakening of God, program number 88. My friend, I'm going to pray. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, bless the listeners. Lord, may they learn something new. May they know your word is coming to pass. Father, we bless them all in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello, welcome to the greatest awakening of God. Thank you for tuning in, my friend. Today, we're going to be talking about the last day's prophecies. It is also, it's always wonderful to know the Word of God is coming to pass. Just open up your book and you will see and you will study and know that the Word of God is true, my friend. It is not coming back void. What God says is going to happen. Let me read to you in the book of Isaiah, chapter 46, verse 9 to 10. It says, Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient times, things are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. My friend, now I tell you, the Bible says in John 13, 19, Now I tell you before it comes, that when it does come to pass, you may believe that I am He. And that is what Jesus is clearly saying, my friend. God knows for a fact that everything is coming to pass. So we need to be ready, my friend. You see, when the gospel being preached all throughout the world, according to the scriptures, meaning Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the good news about Jesus who resurrected, who died on the cross for you, my friend, that he loves you so much that John 3, 16 for clearly says that he gave his only son for you. My friend, the Bible says in Mark 13, 10, Revelation 14, 6, the Bible have been translated into over 2,400 languages and dialects covering 90% of the world. My friend, the gospel has been preached in more than 2,400 languages with all the dialects covering 90% of the population of the world. My friend, it's something for you to think about. We're only 10% away. You see, if the Christians get busy, you know, instead of passing tracks to each other, and bragging to each other instead of bragging what they need to do is preach out to the lost souls those that never heard about Jesus they need to hear about Jesus my friend when you do that you're fulfilling the last days prophecy my friend just want to let you know I don't care what you're going through right now it may be hard times you broke times my friend you lost your job you lost your child you lost a loved one my friend you lost your mortgage. You know, you got a pink slip came to you that you're going to be laid off. My friend, just bad news are pouring in after bad, after bad, just coming in and coming in. My friend, don't you worry about it. You know what? When you know Jesus, my friend, that's the good news. The good news is that Jesus cares for you so much, my friend. He loves you and he's going to be there for you. He will never leave you or forsake you. Your world will let you down. Your friends will let you down. Your family members will let you down. Your Christian brother, your Christian sisters, sad to say, even them is going to let you down. My friend, they come aboard, they jump up with you, they praise Jesus in the church with you, they call you up, they tell you how much they love you. I love you. I love you. But you know what, my friend? They end up becoming liars. The love has faded away. The love, for the true love of God does not fade away. The true love of God, it only burns your heart more and more and more. And it just dilute and do, get all that pollution out of you. And all that junk out of you of the anger and the hate and just the evil that's in you. If it's hiding in you, it's going to come out, my friend. Because when you have the true love of the real living Jesus, my friend, you cannot be walking 
in arrogance, in ignorance, in pride. My friend, even I as a minister, I make mistakes, but you know what? It's good to come clean. It's good to come forward. You know, the Bible says before you take your gift to the altar of God, take your gift back, go back and make it right. My friend, if you have wronged someone with your mouth, with your big lips, in how you're gossiping or how you talk bad about somebody, it's time that you truly repent, my friend, because if not, your prayers only hit the ceiling fan. Yes, my friend, it's sad today we got churches. You can go into churches nowadays. You're hardly going to find Bible studies in churches today. You're hardly going to find it, my friend. And if you do find some Bible studies, you're going to find them with the screen. They pull it down and they have remote control and they're doing all your teachings on the, on the board, which is good. But what is sad is, you know, you got people coming to church and they don't even have their Bibles. And then they don't, they don't really want somebody to share like, oh, excuse me, uh, I have a question. I mean, if you're a Bible teacher, the Bible says, be ready in season and out of season. My friend, you need to be ready and study it up. When somebody asks you a question, you are obligated to answer that question. But if you're not studying the Word of God, then you just need to shut up. You need to get down. You don't need to be out there preaching. You understand my saying? My friend, if you're a lazy, lazy, lazy Christian, and then you call yourself a teacher, and then you're mocking a brother or a sister that God has sent in the church, who's an elder, who's waving their hand, who's trying to tell you something to wake up the body of Christ. It's supposed to stir up the people in the church. If everybody's agreeing together, then something is wrong. Not everybody's in agreement. Everybody has an opinion. Everybody has a question. And the Bible says that we need to be ready in season and out of season, my friend. Study to show yourself so you can rightfully divide the Word of God so you don't sound stupid behind that microphone. You know what? Anybody can come up with a microphone and read scriptures and go on the laser board and show you and say, yeah, this is how you worship God. This is the scripture. You know what? That don't mean nothing. You need somebody in there who is lost, somebody in there that's not a good relationship with Jesus, someone there that is dying from within, but they're dying to find out the truth. They want to hear the truth. And sometimes maybe it's not you as the minister or you as the pastor or you the teacher who's teaching. Sometimes the true answer is going to come from somebody who's sitting among the crowd in the church. That's right. Somebody in there might have the answer to that person who's questioning. But you get offended and then you make a quarrel, you make a scene in the church. You make the brother look bad or the sister look bad because you're more knowledgeable in what you think in the Word of God says in your own private interpretation. But my friend, you're just a flat tire. You're wrong. You understand? Because the Bible says do not get into uh, stupid arguments, stupid quarrels, unnecessarily. My friend, you don't have to go make yourself look good because you're a teacher. You don't have to make yourself look good because you're a pastor. Jesus always humbled himself, my friend. Jesus always had the answer. And if you're saying you're a Christian, then A, show the Christ-like. Be the Christ-like. If not, put out or shut up. God is love, my friend. We need to get back to the basic. We need to get back and humble ourselves. We need to get back and fall in love with Jesus. My friend, every day when you're falling in love with Jesus, it cannot be the same. If your love for Jesus is the same yesterday, my friend, you are in trouble. You're in big trouble, my friend. It cannot be the same. You need to be more desperate. You need to be more in love with Jesus. And the fruits will find you. Meaning, the fruits is going to sell you out. It's going to tell the world if you're real or you're phony. The Bible clearly says, for their fruits. By their fruits you shall know them. My friend, if the person is only bragging and boasting about Jesus every day, all day, hey, that's something to think about. I'd rather listen to somebody who's preaching the gospel to you for free than somebody who's getting a big fat check. Let me give you an example. You got these guys on TBN, on television TBN, Paul Crouch, these pastors are collecting $500,000 a year income to run the broadcasting called TBN. His wife is getting $300,000 a year. You can check it out, Google them up, and you can find out for yourself and see if I'm lying to you. Why am I telling you this? Hey, 
if you're a man of God and you're preaching the gospel from your heart, what is this you're getting $500,000 a year and your wife getting $300,000? And then you're shining a $100,000 ring or your $50,000 ring on television and you're telling everybody the TV station is going to shut down if nobody sends you money. My friend, why don't you take your 500000 out of your bank account and put them into the ministry? Hello? It's a tax write-off. Don't you get tax write-off too? Something really troubles me. When you see pastors getting $500,000 a year, my friend, don't support that ministry. Go, so go support a ministry that where you have pastors out there that really have nothing, that broke. You're giving, meaning, I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about giving your time, giving your talent, giving your love, giving your gifts, giving giving love, giving joy, giving happiness, giving the true word of God. My friend, got to come from the heart. It's sad today that we have so much preachers on TV today that are only begging and begging and twisting scriptures in the Bible because they want to profit from you. They want money from you, my friend. It is sad because you know what, my friend, if you're doing the work of God from your heart, and you truly love them, my friend, people are going to reward you secretly. You know what I'm saying, my friend? You got to watch out for those that say, oh, calling you up, I'm going to bless you, I'm going to send money to you, I'm going to send you a check. You know what, keep it, I don't want it. If you be telling me this on the phone, I don't want it. Especially watch out for those, if you're preachers who are doing the word of work of God, and you got guys calling you up saying, I'm going to send you money, I'm going to mail it to you, and it's all by cash. $100 bills, I'm going to send it to you in cash by priority mail or FedEx. My friend, you better call them up and tell them, I don't want it. You can have it because you know what, my friend? If you cannot send me the check or money order, I don't want nothing to do with it because something is not right here. Something is corrupted. You know what? Come find out when I went to fly out there to this island. I'm not going to name it, but this person was supposed to be giving that uh, financial blessing. When it come out, it was a curse. That person was trying to give away currency that was being traced by the government because it was drug money, because he was using the money to do drug deals, and there was being traced, and it was being tracked. And this guy was trying to use me as a minister to take the currency out of the island to save him from trouble because they was investigating the person. My friend, that person wouldn't get raided. I'm so glad that I wasn't greedy because I didn't even care about the money. It's not about the money, it's about the heart. And if you cannot do it with check or money order, I want nothing to do with it. I'm not here to beg for your money. This ministry is nothing to do with, oh, how much money are you going to send me? I don't want it. I want to bless you. I want to make sure you make it. Your soul is more important to me than money. When you stand before Jesus, my friend, I want to make sure that God says to you, well done, my good and faithful servant. I don't want God telling you, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. My friend, you got to bear fruit. You can't just go to church. I don't care what pastors are telling you, my friend. If you think it's just going to church on Sunday and Wednesday and opening your Bible, and you get this false pretense that you're on your way to heaven, my friend, you're fooling yourself, my friend. That's liars. They're not telling you the truth, my friend. It's not how you go to church on Sunday and jumping up and down in church. My friend, it is how straight you walk, how straight you walk the narrow path Monday to Sunday. My friend, you can sneeze Hebrew, speak in Greek. It doesn't matter. If you're not walking the talk and talking the talk, my friend, you better just shut your mouth. You understand what I'm saying? If you're a hypocrite, remember Jesus himself was scolding all the hypocrites who thought they was great in the word of God. They knew the word of God. There was the leader position. There was the priest. There was the high priest. And Jesus even said, you're hypocrites. My friend, if you're just busy passing your tracks to your brothers and sisters who are already saved in church, already know Jesus, then you're just wasting God's time. It's not about, oh, look, my Bible more shiny than yours. I get gold pages. Oh, look at my track. My track more nice than yours. And please, please, when you go to a restaurant, please do not pass your tracks out in a restaurant. 
on the table to the waitress who working hard to serve you on a busy Friday night and Saturday, and instead you're leaving a nice tip on the table for her or him, you leave a stupid track and says, God loves you. My friend, that track ain't going to pay their bills. You're an insult to God. You're disgraceful, my friend. How could you do that? Pass a stupid track and don't even leave a good currency on the table to bless that person. My friend, if you left a $50 bill or maybe a hundred, I guarantee the person gonna read the track. Now we open up, you just don't open up her heart, you just don't open up her mind. All day she had a hard day and you came in, you would show her love beyond the words of God, beyond the comfort of the word of God. You even gave her a track and then most of all you proved the love by leaving a beautiful currency that would touch her heart. All day of a hard day she was having, all she thought about was you, my friend. You, because you came in with a love, with your generosity. You gave her money that really came from your heart. You didn't call her mom and say, oh, I want a date. You didn't call her up and say, oh, I want a discount. You never go back into the restaurant and say, oh, you remember me? I'm the one who gave you the 50. I'm the one who gave you the 100. My friend, when you give them from the heart, trust me, the people, when you walk away, they're thinking about you. You made their day. Because, my friend, if they're about to be sleeping on the street, about to lose their car, about to starve because they have no groceries on the table, and you left the money, that's the proof that you love them. Not just a track. Hello, what are you going to do? Eat the track. So I'm speaking prophecy, my friend. Truth. The Bible says, you have false prophets that would be money hungry, smooth talkers. Second Peter chapter 2 verse 3. A growing number of TV evangelists, they twist the scriptures using misleading words to make merchandise of the unworry. A lot of people out there worrying and panicking, believing, oh, maybe if I give money, I'll be doing okay. My friend, you can give God $1 million. You can give him $1,000, $10,000. You can give it to God. That doesn't mean that money, when Loomis truck will come down from the clouds and fall right in front of your doorstep, in front of your house, and the door's going to open, and all the bag of money is going to fall out. When you walk out of your door, you fall right on top of the bags. Negative. My friend, these pastors, those preachers, they're telling you all this about, you're going to be blessed. God is going to bless you a hundredfold, a thousandfold. Oh, I see the angels bringing the hundred dollar bills down. Those are lying devils, my friend. I can tell you what God will do for you if you're giving from the heart, not to be seen of the world, and you gave it in secret. I can tell you what God will do for you. He will give you a good idea, and you get a pen. You get a paper, you write it down. How do I know that? Because I did it. You see, I gave God. And then you know what God gave me in return? He gave me an idea that bought me, with the stroke of my pen, more than $100,000. Yes. More than $100,000 in cash with a stroke of my pen. Why? Because God has given me the idea. See, God gives you an idea, and when you write it down, and when you put it into action, then the blessings come in, then the money comes in, and then you get the connection, because knowledge is power, and knowledge is very, very awesome. My friend, why do you think a lot of people are being destroyed? The Bible clearly says, for my people are destroyed because lack of knowledge. My friend, if you know more knowledge, mm, sad. You want knowledge? Open the Bible, read it, dive inside, my friend, and you will get the knowledge because God is awesome, my friend. The Bible says also, okay, let's look at right over here. In the last days, my friend, you're going to have a lot of people, they're lovers of themselves, children disrespectful to their parents, they're a bunch of flat tires. They want to freeload off their parents. They want to leech off their parents. They don't want to go look for a job. They want mommy and daddy to take care of them, feed them three meals a day, wash their clothes, do everything for them. And then when they ask them to do chores, they get a stink attitude. I don't want to do it. You know what I mean? My friend, that's sad because your parents are taking care of you. You should stop being lazy and do your chores. 
You know, and I get this boy grumbling to me, calling me up. You know, my mother always abusing me. You know, they're always getting me mad. They're always picking on me. And you know what I told him? The Bible says, honor your mother and honor your father. My friend, you want to live long, you better honor them. But you know what? He told me, F you, when I told him that. And then he ended up getting run over in front of Times Supermarket. He was stuck underneath the car. Grandma went, pressed the gas paddle accidentally, thought it was the brake paddle, and ran him over right by Time Supermarket. And he was stuck underneath the car, and the ambulance had to go and pull him out of the car. And the fire department to lift up the car and get him out and take him to the hospital. He was a traumatized patient. Traumatized meaning you may not make it. And then he almost died. But guess what? He lived. Uh, bill, the bill would cost $100,000, the hospital bill. All because the words came out of his mouth. Disobedience to his parents. My friend, if you're disobedience to your parents, you're going to be cursed. That's right. That's witchcraft. And then his brother. Oh, my God. Not him. I look, now his brother yelling at his father. And I told the brother the same thing. Hey, watch your mouth. What you talking to your dad? He told me the same thing. He got run over riding Kaneohe on Cam Highway in front of Burger King. He was stuck underneath one van. <laughs> Hello. He was stuck underneath the van in front of Burger King. But I'm not going to release the name, but I'm letting you know. <laughs> Things happen. And then I get this other young guy walking around in Kaneohe, going to his girlfriend's house by Luluko Road, Kaneohe. I don't know. I just call him up and say, brother, when you walk, please, when you watch, watch, when you cross the street, please watch when you cross. Don't just trust the light. Ah, no worry. No worry. Hang up the phone that same night, right in front of the local road. Somebody was DUI drunk, ran the red light, and pinned him right against the guardrail and left him from be, to be dead, bleeding, hanging on the guardrail, and that guy took off. Thank God there was an off-duty policeman when chased this guy down and caught the guy for DUI. But yet this brother, lucky he had his friend with him because he was bleeding stuck on the rail. And the fire department came, the ambulance came, and he, uh, he has survived. But he's not calling me now because he's all scared because I don't know why, just things I've been speaking and it's coming to existence and boom. I got this other guy calling me up, cussing me, cussing on the phone with the F words to me. I said, brother, please, you got to stop what you're doing. And he told me, F you, on the phone. And there was a witness who saw him on the phone saying that to me. And I got the message from the witness. Oh, you know the guy was swearing to you on the phone. He had a heart attack. He dropped dead. He died. Why am I telling you this, my friend? I have no idea. Just people been dropping dead. Then I had this other guy went wrong me, lied to me, got me arrested. I went to the police department. I've been processed with the police. Hey, guess what? They found out he was a liar. Now they want to prosecute him. So they came to me. Oh, uh, sir, we want to prosecute. Are you willing to testify? Are you willing to press charges? I said, no, negative. I forgive that brother. And you know what, my friend? He made false accusations. He should have come clean and come to me and apologize, but he never did. But I just got the report. They, they found him dead. He died. And he's going to be uh, at the furniture service coming up Monday. Right in Kaneohe, across from Wernerman Mall. Sorry to say, he was warned. He should have come and make it right. My friend, if you're going to lie about a man of God, or a man or woman of God, you better make sure you make it right, because if not, God's going to come after you. You know, the Bible says in Psalms, I believe it's 35, 34, 35, 36, read. It says he'll send angels to chase after them. When they're running, they're wondering who's chasing them. They look behind, they see angels pursuing after them. My friend, I just love Jesus with all my heart. And I'm going to preach the gospel. And I'm going to preach the truth to the end. I will not give this up. I will not stop preaching the truth, my friend. God is love, my friend. And he loves you so much. The Bible says in the last days, man, the earth will be filled with violence. My friend, the Bible says in Luke 17, 26. In Genesis 6, 11 to 13. Did you know that the United States violent crime has increased to over 500% since 1960? 50 years ago, abortion was a violent murder of unborn child. Was illegal in most countries. Today, abortion is legal in most countries and 46 million children are aborted every year are being slaughtered. 46 million. That's more than you put Hitler together 
all the people Hitler would kill, and all the evil leaders of the world cannot compare to this illegal abortion that now is legal as killing children, my friend, worldwide. It is so sad, my friend. We're in our last days. The rapture is going to happen soon. My friend, my advice, stick with Matthew chapter 27, verse 52. Love God with all your heart, mind, strength, and soul. The second is love your neighbor as yourself. If you do these two, Jesus said, I'll add if you kept the entire saying of the prophets and all the commandments. All hangs on the balance of those two. My friend, God loves you so much. I pray with you. Repeat after me. Dear Jesus, please forgive me of all of my sins. Come into my heart and be real to me. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. I believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thank you for dying for me on the cross. Thank you for giving me another chance. Help me to live for you. Father, we thank you, God, in everything that you have done and that you're doing. And I pray in Jesus' name that you will bless me to live right so I don't be left. My friend, at the greatest awakening of God, we love you, my friend. We're not going to beg you for your money. You go ahead and call me. My number is going to show up on the TV screen. And my email, you can write to me, my friend. My address is going to show up on the screen too. I got nothing to hide, my friend. I'm never too busy for you. Call me. I will answer your phone call. Not like a lot of lying preachers on TV. They show their name, their phone number. When you call, you only get an answering machine. And those flat tires don't call you back. But I'll call you back because I'm not a flat tire. I get air in my tire. <laughs> Aloha, aweho, malamapono. <laughs>